Now let's talk about async task a little more in detail. So the async task encapsulates the creation of threads and handlers. So as I told you, whenever I talk about async task, what I'm actually talking about is I'm creating a new thread or I'm spawning a new thread and using it in my application. All right. So the async task is started via the execute method. So if you would have remembered here, I created the async task and called it with the help of the execute method. Can you all see that? All right. All right, so we call always call the async task with the execute method. What the execute method does is it calls the do in background and the on post execute. So what this hap what execute does is it first calls the do in background. So what this method will do is it will do all the necessary background processing and as soon as this method gets over with the processing it calls the on post execute which tells me that my processing is done and if I need to update the UI on the basis of the processing I can do so in the on post execute method. So here is an example when I call execute the first method that cuts called is the do in background and then after that we call the on post execute which tells me that my processing is done now I just need to display the output. As I told you, the domain background method contains the coding instructions which should be performed in the background thread and on the on, on post execute is called by the framework once the domain background method finishes in order to show the results. Very much similar to what I just told you. Let's talk about the parameters. As I told, told you, the parameters progress the result. So these are the various three parameters that I told you. Parameters, the type of parameters sent to the task upon execution, that is what parameters you need it to execute upon progress. The type of the progress unit published during the background computation. computation. Here you will be using an on progress published method in order to publish the progress to the UI and then we finally have the result method. Any person having any doubts in any of the topics till now, you can respond back onto the chat window. Any problems in understanding async task also, you can respond back on the chat window. But let me tell you uh, all that it is very important to just revise all these concepts that have been covered, that I'll be covering in today's class, just because these are all advanced concepts and one must have good understanding knowledge about these concepts. I hope this is clear to everyone. Sure, sure, Gangadhar. So what happens is Gangadhar, whenever, suppose I am actually doing some network download, alright, and what I need to do is I need to show the progress of the network download to my user. So what I can do is I can create a progress dialog and I will be monitoring the amount of data that is getting downloaded from the HTTP request. So here the progress parameter will be an integer variable for me. So what I'll be doing is on progress publish update, what I'll be doing is I'll be calling the progress bar, I'll be having the object reference of the progress bar and I'll be creating the or I'll be updating the progress bar with the help of this integer variable. So as soon as I'll be getting the various updates done, that is I'll be getting the downloading done, my progress publish will be updating my UI, that is my progress dialog box and it will show me the complete execution of the process. So that is how the progress bar or say the on published progress method works in async task. Params has asked me, Aaron has asked me a question what are params? So params are, Aaron are the objects that I want my async task to work upon. So here if you would have seen I was calling the edureka.in URL. So here is my params. So this is the parameter that I passed on to my async task. So that is what the params method does here. I hope this is clear to you Aaron. So here is an example example class. 
It could be a string array as well, Gangadhar, not just a single string, it could be a string array as well. So we can reference the string array with the help of the various indices. If I'm passing on the string array, I can refer to the various string array objects as with reference to the indices. I hope this is clear to you, Gangadhar. I hope you understand what, what I mean by indices here. Instead of 0, I can have 0, 1, 2 if I'm passing on a pair array of strings here. 